Hi guys, Archie Luxury. We're doing paid review 24 QA 28. Quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the two tone bluesy. Let's run the intro and then we'll come into this review. <laughs> Hi guys, this is the Paul Pruder channel where we do paid reviews. Wearing two-tone bluesy, wristwatch check, paid review 24 QA 28. And we've got a beautiful four-piece. You know, I really love these four, the compact collections. You've got to put a lot more thought into it than if you... um. <laughs> If you have a big collection. Now, the interesting thing is I like the way he's displayed. He's got a six-piece box. He's put extra straps in there for his watches because he doesn't have the filler. Filler, which is a, it's a bit of a unique approach. I don't mind that idea. What a good idea. Okie dokie. Let's get into this, the meat and the, and the veg in this paid review here let's go through it here let's go through this one baby hi archie i'm a big fan of your channel can you uh he goes watch review i'm a business owner in the health and fitness industry in scotland i'm married with a young family i've been in the hobby now for about five years i've realized what i like after a few mistakes in some of my first purchases i've had a few amigas iwc's uh, but now have settled with my current four-piece collection. I've come to realize that I like classic pieces with history behind them. I appreciate watches of a certain case size and diameter, 39 to 42 mil and no thicker than 13 mil. Now let's have a look at what he has in the collection. The first one, Tag Heuer Aquaterra. My wife bought me this watch for our wedding in 2018 and was my first luxury watch. I wore this watch daily for around two years. I don't wear it much anymore because I have nicer pieces, but I it always seems, always remains in my collection for sentimental reasons. His wife bought it, Aquaterra. It's actually quite looking at this watch here. On the screen there it's actually a very pretty watch it is it is it's very modern uh, I like the blue I like the blue you know it's not a Rolex it doesn't have the um, you know but it doesn't have the fuck off appeal to an enthusiast but to a normal person this is actually a pretty damn flashy watch I agree with you. Keep it. Your wife gave it to me. Fuck, these bitches don't give you anything. Let me tell you that. I can count the number of watches I've received from bitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they, they don't like to give you shit. And the watches I did receive, I ended up paying for. Next piece, we've got is an Omega Speedmaster. I picked this up January 2022. Um, January 2022, I traded the last generation Hesalite for the new Sapphire Sandwich. I far prefer the new bracelet, and I came to realize that the Sapphire version was the one for me. I just couldn't get over the scratches on the Hesalite. This watch was pre purchased from my local AD. What do I think? I actually love it. The Omega Speedmaster man on the fucking moon, and this is the the sapphire version. Good on you. Look, you've got to make it work for you. What what works for you may not work for me. It's the yin and the yang, yin and yang. That's what it is. It's the yin and the yang of the 
of the fucker. Ying and Yang. So I, I totally get it. Yes, yes, I get it. Number three, Rolex Datejust. My first Rolex was the Datejust 41. I thought long and hard about the configuration. I wanted and decided on the blue dial, smooth bezel, and Jubilee. Actually, it's not a bad combination. The reason I went with the smooth bezel is because I wanted versatility. Although the fluted bezel is beautiful, it was a little too showy for the daily watch. It's also a bit more expensive. I wear this watch on weekdays in rotation with my Speedmaster. This watch was purchased from my local AD. Not a, I got to tell you, the blue, look in the box there. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful watch. I got nothing to complain about that one. That is, I, I would fucking wear that in my collection. I would add that myself. And then finally, number four, we got a Rolex GMT Master 2 root beer. I was on the wait list for three years for this watch and had practically forgotten about it. I turned 40 last year. I wanted to mark the occasion with a special watch. I had started to plan on buying a JLC Reverso Tribute with the Opaline dial. Then the call from Rolex came. This was by far the most expensive watch I've purchased to date. Well, try the solid gold ones. But in my opinion, it's the best one I own. It's a beautiful watch and I wear it. And when I wear it, I find myself glaring at it constantly. I mainly wear this watch on weekends. Okie dokie. What's next? Although I might sound a little boring and predictable, but I like classics. Value retention is also important. Of course, he's fucking Scottish. He's a Scottish fucking geezer. Scottish fucking geezer. Of course, <laughs> value retention is important of course it's all about the money fuckers um i would like to i'd like to add both a rolex submariner no date and a jlc reverso to the collection at some point i'm not in a rush as i want to enjoy the journey i'm on the list for a rolex submariner at my local ad so i'm likely to get that first as they are harder to get than the reversos fucking easy to get but they're expensive you don't want to buy the reverso brand new you want to buy that fucking thing on the pre-owned because they fall like a fucking stone i will look to get the reverso pre-owned for probably half the price of the silly retail 100 percent right how would you rate my collection and am i on the right track kind regards derek <coughs> derek you really for a Scottish geezer, fuck me dead. You've really nailed it. Let's be honest there. I got I love the yin and the yang in this box. Fuck me dead. So you want to add a sub? Whether you add a sub date or a no date, I don't think it really fucking matters. <coughs> I would be just as easy to add a sub date as I would a no date. And a reverso would fucking complete this collection no end at all. In fact, you know what? I'd possibly go for a gold reverso. Possibly look into a rose gold reverso to completely hit this fucker out of the ballpark. Um, Definitely you want to buy the reverso pre-owned. But with that said, what a fucking beautiful collection. I love the Speedy. I love the Datejust. The Datejust, the blue. It's so fucking gorgeous. It's so... It just works. It really fucking works. I love the two tone, the root beer. That's a that's a fucking heavy hit. Look, I'm wearing I'm wearing the two tone bluesy. I mean, the bluesy and the root beer are two heavy hitting uh, two tones. I don't think you need two two tones. I personally find myself because I had two two tones. I had the Maserati dial Daytona, and I had the the sub. And I I really felt you know what one two tone sports rolex is enough <laughs> they're expensive and they're expensive and one's enough so i would say personally a submariner and a reverso what fucking more could you possibly want well i'll tell you what more let's talk what more i would add here so i agree totally i would looking at a reverso i reckon a reverso the tribute is nice but also look at a 976 that's the watch timely has big size you want the big big the, the biggest the grand size sub 
get a sub date or a sub no date steel with black bezel <clears throat> perfect <laughs> what else would i add i tell you what else i'd add i would add a zenith el primero uh the classic zenith el primero i've got the open heart but you could go for the the traditional that that color combination i would also say <clears throat> you could add a tuna in there tuna as a as a beater tuna black bay Add one of those, buy that pre-owned, because Tudor's actually fucking fall on the secondary. That's a good beater to have there. Uh, I'd get the sub and the reverso first, but you don't want to waste your resources on the Tudor. What else would I get? Um, another good classic watch. Maybe something like a Breguet, a Breguet, Breguet Type 20. Just a nice, beautiful piece of kit. Oh, I know what I would add. A Breitling Super Ocean Heritage. Absolutely get that retro vibe. Shark mesh. That would pop in this collection. So there's a few extra pieces for the Scottish geezer. The Scottish geezer. Those are choices which will really add to it. You decide. Lovely collection. I love it. I love the yin and the yang. The yin and the yang just works. Okay, guys, remember, I can't survive on Google Ads. Paid reviews keep me full-time on YouTube. Without the paid reviews, I cannot survive. I desperately need more paid reviews to keep me on YouTube. And, guys, if you're in America, now look down below in the description how to get a paid review. 50 US dollars. Tell me the story. Send me some pics. Send me the money, and I will tell you what I think. I really love this collection. Okay, guys, like, subscribe, tell your friends. And remember, if you're in America, who do I recommend? Hi, guys, it's Archie Luxury. Guys, I want to talk to you about David SW. David SW, David SW. Guys, if you are in America, if you are looking for a Rolex watch of your dreams, in fact, if you're looking for a contemporary modern wristwatch, I strongly advise you to look at David SW. Guys, don't play the dealer games. Don't bring in chocolates or crispy creams for your dealer, hoping to get a Rolex at retail. It's futile. Please, guys, save your dignity. Keep some pride. Go to David SW. I would highly recommend... David SW, David SW. If you're in America and you're looking for a watch, go to David SW, David SW, David 